Today's video is sponsored by Pickers Grip. Stop dropped picks and pick rotation while playing with Pickers Grip. Made with all natural ingredients in Virginia. Check out their website to order. When you support my sponsor, this also supports my channel and it's very much appreciated. If you're a dumbass guitar player sitting at home on quarantine and you've been furloughed from your full-time job and all your gigs have been canceled for the next several months and you got no money coming in, but all of a sudden you just had an extra 1200 bucks land in your account that you maybe weren't planning on. You don't want to spend all of it on gear because that would be irresponsible. Here are 16 of the most affordable tube amps for you to recklessly spend your money on while you're sitting at home with nothing better to do. You just watch that intro and you're sitting there with your spouse or your significant other and they're kind of giving you that eye and some of you i imagine are probably sitting there going <clears throat> meanwhile others of you are sitting there thinking to yourself why do i continue to watch this channel because now all of a sudden you hate me come on let's not pretend like this doesn't apply to some of us out there at any rate i decided that i would put together a list of affordable tube amps out there that are on the used market today the Here's the criteria for this list. I wanted them all to be within a price point that anybody can afford, uh, and I kept that number off at $800. Uh, they had to be a, an actual head. We're not doing combos or anything like that. These are all tube amp heads, uh, most of them in the 50 to 100 watt range. So I'm going to blaze through these here really, really quick because this is a list of 16 items, and I don't want this video to drag on for a half hour. We may find out this video ends up doing that anyway. So without further ado, let's go spend our stimulus money, shall we? Number one, Randall Thrasher. Those of you that watch this channel know I am a huge fan of Randall amps. Uh, I own two of them myself, and uh, one of them in particular, I have done plenty of uh, yeah. plenty of my gear and you know pedal and guitar gear demos through. I actually own one of the Diablo heads, which was actually designed by guitar amp genius Mike Fortin. Well, another one of his creations during his days with Randall before he went on to start Fortin Amps uh, was the Thrasher series. The Thrasher Amps are metal machines. Uh, Mike Fortin designed them, so you know that they're designed and built right. These sell brand new for sixteen to eighteen hundred dollars, I believe. However, uh, in researching this video, I found them used quite a few places for eight hundred dollars. That's half off the price of a new one. Number two. Marshall JCM 900 series. There are about several different amps that encompass the 900s, but uh, for the most most of them are all worth about the same. Uh, you know, are all in about the same ballpark uh, value wise within about 200 bucks, two to 300 bucks, uh, depending on if you're talking about the dual reverbs or the Mark threes or the SLXs, uh, the 50 watts or 100 watts, uh, and uh, that's really. You know those six variations. That's pretty much all of them. The 900 series kind of had that had that that uh, that Marshall classic modern uh, mojo to them that I happen to love. They have been used. The matter of fact, they're still being used by Judas Priest and uh, Paul Stanley and Ace Frehley are both in their separate endeavors. They're obviously not in the same band anymore, but both of those guys have been avid 900 users for. Uh, decades now, the 900s vary on the used market anywhere from a you know between about seven or eight hundred bucks for the hundred waters. If you step down to the 50 watts, you can probably knock bet about fifty to a hundred dollars off of that price. Number three, Diamond Amplification F4. Most of the Diamond amps are pretty high end and pretty expensive. You know, well between two and three thousand uh, dollars. The F4s, however, are part of the Vanguard series, which are an import line. Uh, they are built basically with the you know the same you know really the same build quality that you can find in the American made series but they're made overseas uh, to save on cost you know, so of course they're going to be a little bit more inexpensive than the uh, than the American made amplifiers however however on the used market you can find a used f4 for about 750 bucks right now and it's a great deal killer amps number four PV 5150 and 6505 which are basically two different generations of the same amplifier. 
I don't need to spend a whole lot of time talking about them. We're all familiar with them, quite frankly. I wanted to put the PB Windsor on this list because you can find those all over the place for, for about 250 bucks, and those are all but forgotten. But you guys will lose your minds if I didn't talk about the 5150 and the 6505s and all that. Yeah, so, so here you go. Here's your PV 5150 and 6505 entry, which you can find on the used market all day long for 650 bucks, give or take. Number five, Crank Chadwick. You guys remember Crank Amplifiers? Crank Amplifiers got their name on the map when they came out with the Crankenstein Once Upon a Time, which was the first Dimebag Daryl signature tube amplifier uh, that he was endorsing and actually using pretty, uh, pretty, pretty significantly. Uh, you know, he was, I saw him using it in all of his live rigs there in the damage plan days. And in doing such, you know, when they did so, all of a sudden, the rest of the world discovered crank amplifiers and they make a lot of really, really cool amps. And they're not all high-gain metal monster machines. Uh, the, the Chadwick, for example, is kind of a little bit more uh, in the Marshall Plexi neighborhood and uh, actually sounds really, really good. Uh, it's a little bit, they're a little bit darker sounding than a, than a Marshall Plexi, I think. So, you know, they do have a little bit of their own flavor, but it's certainly in that neighborhood, uh, in that direction. I found a couple in researching this video that are all selling for right around the $600 range. I have seen them sell cheaper than that uh, here in the past. Number six, Marshall JCM2000 DSLs. Specifically the 100s, uh, the, you know, of course the 50 watts are the same amp, just half the power. Uh, but the original JCM2000 DSL 100s are the ones I'm talking about here. These are the first generation. These are the ones uh, from the 2000s that were still made in the UK. Great sounding amps. You saw guys playing all different kinds of genres of music that were using these. You know, the rock guys are using them, the blues guys are using them, the metal guys are using them. They got a great clean channel. Every game tone that you can think of you can probably you can dial out of that thing uh they're built really really well and you can find them on the used market still those things are sold on the used market for about 600 bucks pretty consistently for over a decade now number seven carvin v3 a three channel modern high gain amplifier with an excellent clean channel on it you know this is another one of those amps that does it all and carvin just does it right when it comes to designing amplifiers uh they're fortunately carvin eliminate the middleman and they don't sell through dealers they sell everything direct as we all know uh and that also helps to cut the cost of them on the used market you can find a full size the big one there's also a smaller version but they make a big version of the v3 that you can find on the used market right now for about 475 bucks that's a steal number eight Vox AC15H. This is the only amp on this list that is technically a low wattage amp at 15 watts. However, the Vox AC series are all class A, and that 15 watts sounds like about 50 watts or more uh, in a class AB amplifier, which is what most of the rest of these are. Of course, the Vox AC15 has been around, it's been a classic since the 60s. Uh, there's been a lot of different versions of these. The AC15CH, which is the head version, that I am referring to uh, right now sells used for uh, about 475 bucks. Number nine, Ampeg Reverber Rocket. Here's another forgotten gem. I was in a band a while back called Secondhand Theory, and our pr our primary songwriter, uh, who also happens to be a, one of my best friends, gave me permission to use a Secondhand Theory song in a demo video here a while back. Uh, it was actually one of the, the Boss 200 series videos that I did. That aside, the reason why I mention that is because the Ampeg Reverber Rocket, Brett all, actually had a Reverber Rocket half stack in his basement that I would use for practice when we all went over there to uh, for band practice at his house. And it was a great sounding amp. One of the ones I, I, I tried, I almost thought about taking it home with me a few times, but at that time I lived in an apartment. It didn't make sense to lug it around. But now that I see that you can buy them used for 450 bucks, that's making me rethink it. Number 10, Egnator Tone Master. You know, Bruce Egnator, of course, is one of the most well-known names in the amplifier uh, business, guitar amplifier business, that is. He's been, you know, Bruce Egnator has been designing and building amps since 
probably the 80s if I had to guess, but I think, you know, his name kind of started to get out there in the early 90s. He was involved in the Randall Module Heads. Uh, he is currently involved in the new Synergy Amps, which are fantastic, and you know, all kinds of stuff in between, and, let's not, and that includes his own line of Eggnator amplifiers. When the Tour Master came out, they sold for about 1500 bucks brand new. And they were a four-channel amp and did everything you could possibly think of. And uh, even for a brand new amp at 1500 bucks, uh, 10, 15 years ago, it was quite a bargain. But now you can buy them used for about 450. Number 11, the PV3120. PV's made a couple of appearances on this list already, and they this isn't even going to be the last one. You know, PV just make fantastic amps at a price that everybody can afford one amp that a lot of people seem to have forgotten about because they only made it for about a year or two and i don't know why they why they discontinued it but it was a uh, it was the amp called the 3120 and the pv3120 was a killer sounding amp three channels el34 power tubes in it uh it, it just it sounded great for some reason i guess they just didn't take off well enough for them but that works out well for us now because now you can find them on the used market for about 400 bucks. Number 12, Carbon X100B. These were popular back in the 1980s. These kind of had a JCM 800-ish flavor to them. Back in the 1980s, the, J the Marshall JCM 800 was the amp that everybody had to have, so all the other amp competitors, uh, all the other amp companies were trying to put out something that was in that ballpark uh, to compete. And this was Carbon's entry. Pete Thorne recently uh, put up a video uh, with an interview with, with uh, none other than the legendary Steve Vai. And uh, that interview was based around Steve Vai's uh, Marshall Plexi back then. And part of the story that Steve told about that amp was uh, switching back and forth between that and the Carbon X100B, I believe. Great amps. You can still find them on the used market today very, very easily. Uh, these sell right now for about 350 Number 13. PV Classic 100. I told you PV was going to be on this list a few times, and you know why they make amps that are that just cater to the used market so well. The reason why is because where most amp companies will use a part that costs about 40 or 50 cents, PV will use a part, you know, that same part, but they will spend the money and get the good one and pay about two bucks for it and in doing so that means all of the components on the inside of their amplifiers are killer so essentially you know they kind of take a hit in their profit margin to be able and sell them they sell their amps at a lower profit margin that again most people can afford so when an amp like the pv classic 100 hits the used market at 350 bucks you gotta pay attention I don't know that these amps were originally designed to compete with the Fender Hot Rods, but you know it certainly seems to be the ones they've competed against the last 15 years or so. I haven't, you know, to my knowledge, the 100 watt heads have not been in production for quite some time. You know, so all of those, I believe, are actually some of the older made in, U made in USA models before they moved production to China. So if you stumble on a on a PV Classic 100 head, especially the one that I saw for 350 bucks, you need to grab it because they sound killer. Number 14, Gensben's El Diablo 100. Remember these heads? You may or you may not. Gensben's are not the biggest amp company in the world. Some people know who they are, some people don't. They kind of seem to be most well known for their amp cabinets, or uh, you know, their speaker cabinets rather, you know, they do make killer speaker cabs. Uh, but they also had a couple of really good amp heads along the way and one of those that i happened to really really like was the el diablo 100 these things weighed a ton it was not a lot of fun lugging these things around but you know they were high gain amps and uh had a really had a re actually a really really good clean sound to it uh clean channel on them and they just did everything that you know you could need them to do and i found one used before i turned on the camera to shoot this video for 325 bucks that's the cheapest I've ever seen one go for. And it looked like it was in pretty good shape. Number 15, the Crate Blue Voodoo. This is probably my personal favorite on this list because the Crate Blue Voodoo 120 
uh, I had a first year, the first year they were made, the one with the cartoon logo. The Crepe Blue Voodoo 120 was my very first tube amp, and I loved that thing to death. And I had, I've been kicking myself ever since for selling it. I would love to have another one. It's, you know, if you want to know what it sounds like, it's kind of like a poor man's Marshall JCM 900, to be honest. Uh, I saw right here lately, I've seen them selling for about 300 bucks used, but, you know, I see them go well below that in the two to 250 range. And with the exception of the last year, they were made maybe two years. All of the Blue Voodoos were made in the U.S. Where are you going to find an American-made amplifier today for 250 to 300 bucks? And number 16, the B-52, AT-100, and ATX-100. I, this is really two different amps, but it's also it's really just two generations of the same amplifier. And I happen to own, I've owned them both. I've heard a few people, not many, but a few people recently complained about their reliability. I think it's complete garbage. Like I said, I've owned both of them, and I never had a single problem with either one of them. They sound killer. The uh, the first one, the AT100, especially, is basically a poor man's Mesa Boogie dual rectifier. Uh, the ATX100 was a little bit more, uh, a little bit more of an updated version. Kind of, you know, the mids, the mid range was boosted up in it and was a little bit brighter, but certainly a lot, uh, a lot warmer in the mid range. Uh, regardless, both high gain amps, and you know, they sound, they they just they sound killer. A uh, couple of other amps that I kind of wish I'd never gotten rid of. Anyway, these things you can find on the used market pretty consistently for about 200 bucks. All tube amplifiers, 100 watts for 200 bucks. Can't beat it. So, there you have it. That is all for this list. I hope that I kept it, kept the time down according to the timer on my camera. I don't think I did, but... With any luck, maybe you found this content interesting and you have still managed to hang in there here to this point. So, if you have, now you got some great things to go and spend your stimulus check money on, whether it be the most responsible thing in the world for you to do, or whether it be the dumbest thing you could possibly do right now. You gotta love quarantine, right? I'll post links as I can find them down in the description. Please don't forget to do that, uh, that like, comment, subscribe thing. Thank you so much for watching. Be safe, everybody.